In this video, we'll be talking about query parameters and how they can be used when creating APS using the online editor. We will be creating an HTTP GET request in this video, but query parameters can be used with POST, PUT, and DELETE requests in the same way shown in this video. Let's launch the API endpoint editor. Select GET from the HTTP method list. We will enter a path in the API path field. Let's assume that we are creating a GET API that receives make, model, and year of automobiles as query parameters and return their count in inventory. Let's now scroll down to the query parameters section. Select exact from the match type list. We will enter make as the key and Honda as the value and press the add query parameter button. Let's add the second parameter key and value. Second key is model and its value is accord. Now we will add the third query parameter, enter year and 2016 in the value field. We have added all the query parameters. Now we will proceed to the HTTP response section to define the response of the API. We will enter 200 in the HTTP response code field because we want this API to return a code of HTTP 200. HTTP return codes help the calling application in determining if the response contains the requested information or if the server was unable to fulfill the request due to some reason. This API will return the vehicle inventory count in JSON format. So let's enter application slash JSON in the content type field. And then we will enter the actual contents of the response body. Next, we will go to alternate HTTP responses section to add four more responses to this API. We will enter the HTTP code, content type, and response body, and press the save add alternate response button. We will repeat this process until we have added the desired number of responses. Now that we have added the desired number of responses, we'll go ahead and publish this API so that it is ready for use. Let's press the test API endpoint button to test this API. All the fields are pre-populated. We can go ahead and press the test API button and wait for the server response. We have received the server response and as you can see that the response code is 200. The response content type is application slash JSON and the response body shows that the inventory count is 50. Everything matches up with what we instructed the API to send as response. Let's now change the query parameters and call the API once again. We'll change the model to civic and change the year to 2018. Let's clear the previous API response first. and then press the test API button to call the API. The server has returned 404 because the server couldn't find a matching endpoint. When we created the API endpoint, we instructed the server to return a response only when the query parameters are Honda Accord in 2016. The server will return an error if it receives any other values. So how can we make our query parameters dynamic so that they can accept any values they receive from the client application? 
Let's go back to the editor and make a small change to the API endpoint. Let's go to the request query parameters section. Change the value of query parameters match type from exact to any. We are done making the changes. Let's save the changes and test the API once again. Press the test API endpoint button. All the fields are pre-populated, so we will go ahead and press the test API button and wait for the response to come back. We receive the expected response from the server. Now let's run another test, but this time we will modify some of the query parameters before calling the API. Let's change the model to Camry, the year to 2019, and the make of the car to Toyota. Let's press the test API button now and wait for the server response. As you can see, the server has returned us the expected response. Response code is 200. Response body shows the count of 15 in JSON format. We will now head back to the API editor again, and this time we'll enable the simulation mode. Simulation mode is currently off. Let's press the button to switch it on. Simulation mode is now on. Let's test the API again. We will change the value of the query parameters first. Query parameters have been changed. Let's call the API a few times. As you can see, the API has been returning different responses. In this video, we have demonstrated how query parameters can be coupled with response simulation to build virtual APIs that can be useful during application development and testing.